Hello and welcome to another video by www.electricalpereview.com. Welcome to a chalkboard session. We're going to do a quick review on complex numbers. Complex numbers, we've got two different ways to represent a vector. Polar, using a magnitude and an angle, and rectangular, using a real component and an imaginary component of a triangle. So let's say we've got a vector in our polar form, magnitude r at an angle of theta. To graph this, we always draw our vector starting at the origin. We'll say that's magnitude r in our, at an angle of theta. For a rectangular complex number, let's say we've got a vector of a plus jb. When we graph this as well, we've got A on the real axis, B on the imaginary axis, and where these two points intersect is our vector, A plus JB. Now we can relate these two if they are the same vector, since they can be expressed in either polar or rectangular. So let's draw a triangle and see how they relate. We'll say this is a right triangle, magnitude r, with a real component a, imaginary component b, at an angle of theta. Well, if we remember back from our geometry and trigonometry days, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, except for now, we're arbitrarily using r as a hypotenuse. So we can solve for r as r equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. So over here, r in polar form expressed in rectangular is going to be the same thing as the square root of a squared plus b squared. The next thing is, if we want to represent our angle theta from polar to rectangular, we know that tangent theta equals our opposite leg of the triangle, which is b, over our adjacent leg of the triangle, which is a. So we solve for theta as equaling the inverse tangent of b over a. So theta, if given only our real components, or a vector in rectangular, is the same thing as inverse tan of b over a. All right, well, what about going backwards? What about expressing our real components in their polar form? Well, again, we know that going back to geometry and trig, cosine theta equals our adjacent leg of the triangle, which is A, over our hypotenuse, which is R, and sine theta equals our opposite leg of the triangle, which is B, over our hypotenuse, which is R. We can solve both of these for our real components to be expressed in polar as A equals R times cosine theta and b equals r times sine theta. So we go back over to our triangle and we plug this in. Our real component of our rectangular vector a equals r cosine theta and b, our imaginary component of our rectangular vector, is the same as r sine theta. So bringing this all together if we have a vector, we'll just say vector v equals magnitude r at an angle of theta. That's the same thing as magnitude square root a squared plus b squared at an angle of inverse tan b over a in degrees. 
Similarly, if we have the same vector v expressed in rectangular as a plus jb, that's going to be the same as r cosine theta plus j r sine theta. Now these are the same exact value. The only difference is one is being expressed in polar using polar components, expressed in polar using only our real, or I'm sorry, rectangular components, and the same vector expressed in rectangular with our rectangular components, and expressed in rectangular with our polar components. This is used for converting back and forth between polar versus rectangular form. Okay, that's it for this video. Next up, we're going to do a couple of examples to show how this is used when put into practice. For more examples and to visit our premium review course, come see us at www.electricalpereview.com.